If you watched my Pentium MMX build video, you'll remember that one of the things that we were able to use that computer for was to browse old websites using the old net.com. Which, by the way, I recently found out has a proxy server that allows you to navigate to websites by just typing their URL directly on the browser's address bar, just like if you were browsing the internet in that time period. Regardless, using the old net is awesome because it's very nostalgic for me to browse the web 1.0. But another thing that I enjoy doing with old computers is trying to get them to be as useful as possible in the modern era. And for better or for worse, computers are not as useful anymore for day-to-day -day use without being able to access modern websites. Which forces you to have to stick with one of the main operating systems in the market, Windows, Mac OS or Linux. Even other modern alternative operating systems such as Haiku OS, which is one of my favorites, are a challenge. A lot of those operating systems don't have a current port of any of the main browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Opera or whatever, which means that they usually depend on custom-made browsers built on an older version of something like WebKit. Needless to say, the web browsing experience is sadly less than ideal on those operating systems, resulting on a lot of modern websites working poorly or not working at all, which is what prevents them from from being good candidates for daily driver OS's. Now, when it comes to legacy operating systems such as Windows 95, 98 or my favorite operating system, Windows 3.11. Uh, Windows 3.11 isn't an operating system, it's an operating environment for DAWs. Learn your definitions, bro. As I was saying, with legacy operating systems, that's even more of a challenge because there's no way you can run browsers that support modern web technologies like HTML5, CSS3, or ECMAScript 2016, which is one of the latest iterations of JavaScript. Because of that, browsing the modern web on those OSs is basically impossible. Or is it? A few weeks ago, I came across a Reddit post of someone using Discord on a Sega Dreamcast using a piece of software called Web Rendering Proxy, which is available for download on GitHub. I was blown away by that, so I went to test it straight away. The idea behind it is very simple. When you run the software on your computer, it basically loads a headless instance of Chrome in the background that is responsible for rendering the websites. When you access it from a retro computer, it loads a simple HTML page with a screenshot of the current state of the web page in that Chrome instance. WRP uses a feature called ismap that has been available for a long time on web browsers that sends the coordinates of where on the image you clicked to the server and WRP uses that to execute a click command in the Chrome instance. It is a very clever approach and you can use it with very, very old browsers like NCSA Mosaic as I'm doing here. But all browser interactions have to be done on this HTML page which means that the browser buttons have no purpose anymore. It's not a huge deal but it's something to keep in mind. So, to go to a website, you have to type its URL on this first input and then the page will reload showing the website in a couple of seconds. If your screen resolution is higher or smaller than the screen area, you can change it in these two fields so it can fit better your browser. After that, you can click around on the website as you would normally. It will take a couple of seconds after you click on something for it to update, which I imagine happens because there's a catch-all timeout to wait for all the elements to load and all the animations to finish on the page. Now, when you need to input text, you can't simply start typing. You have to use this input and after pressing enter, the text will be sent to the server to be typed. That's not a huge deal. What kind of sucks though is that if you need to use backspace after you entered some text, you'll have to press this button for each character to be erased with a page load in between. Needless to say, this is a really cool piece of software, albeit with some limitations, the main one being the time it takes to update the page between clicks. Luckily, this is not the only option we have in terms of these proxy services. After I found out about the WRP, I was looking for more information on it when I bumped into this MicroMJD video about a piece of software called Browse Service. The idea behind it isn't very different from WRP. It's basically a proxy service that runs a Chrome instance in the background and sends you a page with screenshots of the browser that you can interact with. The difference between the two though is that Browse Service makes use of some JavaScript to basically stream the screenshots down making the page a lot more interactive. 
This obviously comes at the cost of some incompatibility with very old browsers. You basically won't be able to use any browsers prior to Internet Explorer 4 due to browse services use of JavaScript and CSS. But that's not a huge deal since virtually all operating systems have browsers that can run it, including Windows 3.11. To run browse service, you need some sort of Linux machine, meaning you can totally have a Raspberry Pi dedicated to it. Right now, I'm running it off of an Ubuntu virtual machine, but I do plan on eventually setting it up on a more permanent manner. I won't go through the setup process here because it is very well explained in the readme file in the GitHub repo. You can do the setup in about 10 minutes by just copy and pasting some commands. When you navigate to Browse Services URL, you are greeted with this navigation bar, which similarly to WRP you have to use to navigate to websites. The cool thing though is that this bar has a similar style to the address bar on Internet Explorer, so you can basically hide the IE's one and this bar blends in very well. From here, you can just type any URL and after Browse Service loads it, you can navigate as normal on it. Look at how much more interactive this is. I'm so blown away that you can actually type as if the page was loaded locally. When you do that, Browse Service captures your keystrokes and sends them to the server, which in turn executes those keystrokes in the Chrome instance. That means you can use Backspace as normal as well. You can also use the back and forward buttons of the browser normally. Of course, again, there are some things that you can't do directly through the browser, like finding a piece of text on the page since Browse Service is basically streaming down images. For that reason, you have to use these controls up here for searching and for copy and pasting. By default, Browse Service sends full quality PNGs, but you can lower the quality to make loading the images a bit easier on your browser. When you do this, the images will switch to JPEG and you can go all the way down to 10% quality. I am using Internet Explorer 4 on Windows 95 here, and as you can see, it is a bit slow, probably because this computer isn't super fast. But you can totally watch YouTube videos on this computer if you don't mind them playing at around one frame per second. The Sega Dreamcast is one of my favorite consoles of all time, and also a console I have a bit of a sad history with. My parents gave me one for Christmas around. Also, keep in mind that the audio will come from the host, but with a fast enough computer and a decent browser, you can have a pretty decent experience. On Windows 3.11, the situation is a bit worse in terms of performance, but it does work. However, Browse Service really shines on more powerful computers. Aside from the address bar, you wouldn't even realize we're basically just loading images. Browse Service works great on Internet Explorer because, interestingly, of the legacy browsers, it is the one that has one of the closest JavaScript implementations to the modern standards. You think the IE6 era was bad? The IE4 time period was the wild west of web browser engine implementations. My favorite browser is Netscape, specifically version 4. There is nothing more nostalgic than the animation with the stars and meteors while the web pages are loading. But sadly, Browse Service doesn't work on it yet. The reason for that, which I found the hard way, 
is that a lot of the APIs on Netscape are very different from Internet Explorer. Not only that, but CSS support is almost non-existent and the little that is available is super buggy. I logged an issue on Browse Services GitHub repo asking about Netscape 4 support and some guidance so maybe I could help to get it working. After a couple of weeks of hitting my head against the wall searching on Google for how to solve issues on JavaScript 1.2, going through these old JavaScript books and talking to Browse Services author, I managed to get it kind of working on Netscape 4. It was super hard because, as I said, I had to learn about Netscape 4's quirks to get it working, and there are a lot of them. Heck, it's not even just the differences, there are some bugs like for example the inability to directly swap the URL on an image tag. To do that, you need to instantiate another image object in JavaScript, and then after that's loaded, you set the URL in the image tag using the src attribute of the image you instantiated previously. If you don't really understand what I'm talking about here, don't worry, basically there are some silly bugs that prevented me from easily updating the images that are sent down by browse service. On top of that, my changes made browse service not work properly on the officially supported browsers anymore, so they're probably gonna live in a branch for a while until I can get them working in a more acceptable manner and I can integrate them better with the code that already works on other browsers, which is totally possible but super tedious. But yeah, all of that for a really terrible experience on Windows 3.11. It runs super slow, to the point that you can't even finish downloading a screenshot before the download of the next one start. There's also a weird bug that the letter T on the keyboard resets inputs, making it hard to go directly to websites like Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, and etc. I never realized how many websites use the letter T in their names. Despite all of those issues and limitations, I can kinda browse the modern web on Netscape 4, which is pretty incredible. Here it is running on a Windows XP virtual machine. It is still horrible, but at least it's usable. While I was trying to get browse service working on Netscape, I was wondering if I could mix the browse service and the web rendering proxy approaches a bit while focusing on Netscape to not only get it working better on it, but also to make it more usable on Windows 3.11 on my Pentium MMX, which tends to run these things slowly. So I started writing my own proxy service on Node.js that also uses Chrome in the background to render the pages and send their screenshots down to the client browser. It works similarly to the WRP in the sense that it uses the ismap feature to send the click coordinates to the server, so a click command can be executed in the Chrome instance. But instead of waiting for a set interval to reload between clicks to make sure things are loaded, it loads the page again instantly and every 200 milliseconds it updates the image with a new screenshot, which makes it faster than WRP. So you will always have a true reflection of what's happening in the Chrome instance just like browse service. So can you watch YouTube videos with this? Yes, again, if you don't mind watching it at around 1 frame per second, you totally can. Of course this thing is still very rough around the edges, this was mostly an experiment 100% focused on Netscape. But hey, it does work on Netscape 4 and you can also have your keystrokes sent to the server by typing them directly and use the back button on the browser. Regardless, it's probably a better idea to focus on improving browse service as it's a better piece of software overall. And there you have it. These proxy services are incredible. I can't believe I hadn't heard about them earlier, but I sure am glad I did. You should totally give them a try if you like getting old computers to do stuff that they can't do anymore. Just keep in mind not to access sensitive information through them because old browsers don't support the level of encryption that is used today by websites, which means that your information could be vulnerable using them. And that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to like it. And if you enjoy content around retro gaming and retro computing, Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future parts of this experiment. Thanks for watching.